la acest direct. Astăzi o să cunoaștem povestea a doi oameni care se iubesc enorm și în același timp nu reușesc să conviețuiască. Îi invit în platou pe Ramona Stricatu și Irine Ciobanu. Aplauze! Bienvenido a este programa de televisión. Va a ser una espectacular programa. Nos vamos a conocer a María y a José. Bienvenido. Buenas noches. This is a story about two partners that, after lifelong love, they blame each other for all sorts of, sort of things, even cheating. What do you think this show is about? About uh, long life partners who are blaming each other. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> uh, I think there is some problems between this couple. Okay, problems between the couple. But you, what do you think it's uh, this about? I don't know. <laughs> okay. It's okay, you'll find out. <laughs> okay, what do you think this show is about? Relationship. Relationships. Okay, thank you. How long have you been together? Uh, we've been together for around three years now. Okay, okay. But still you know each other from a long time ago, right? Uh, what is your story? Yeah, we've been together when we were young. Uh, and then we broke up, uh, she went to work, uh, she married another guy. Oh! Uh, then I, so I also married. To <laughs> <laughs> something? Yes, in a way. I was married for four years. <laughs> so, what is your astrological sign? I'm a Virgo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Virgo is there like that, yeah. This is true. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, did you uh, find another man? Like, were you in another relationship? Yes, I have been married for 17 years with another man. Wow, 17 years! Wow. But you, you said you only have been in a relationship with another woman for four years. That's right. Right. And how did you end up together? How did you get connected? Like, uh, did you break up before or after? Yes, I was not happily married with that other man. He had a drinking problem and I just couldn't take it anymore. So we broke up and then we got back together again. Yes, I mean, um, I was in another relationship, but I broke up with her before reconnecting. Because she, I mean, the ex, wanted me to move on, get, move in with her and her family. I mean, this is totally unacceptable for me as a male. So I said no, and we broke up. And then, um, by coincidence, after just a couple of days, I uh, have a tattoo a tattoo view with a friend of mine, and he said that um, that Maria also split, uh, broke up with her ex. So I mean, I reconnected with her, and this is definitely God's will. I mean, if this is not destiny, what else could that be? Uh, these stories, but let's find out what's in Ramona's head. What's she saying? Ramona, tell me how are you feeling right now? I mean, for me, it's very hard to hear uh, all these lies, and I think the story is being twisted because uh, he, from the beginning, he was like very jealous and controlling man, and uh, it was really hard for me to live with such a nasty person. But uh, you know, I'm used to this. Like everybody is always listening to him and his side of the story. Okay, we heard from Ramona, now let's see what some other characters are thinking. Lucia, do you care about Maria and Jose? Um, hmm, these are just characters, so yeah, I don't really care about them. Uh, they just get my salary to be paid. Yeah, I don't care about them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> In this three 
years, you didn't have peace, right? Why? How did you get along at the beginning? It was very well. Okay. It was good. Nice. It, it is not like that. He was very jealous and controlling from the, from the beginning. He, one time, he locked me in the house. Oh. In the first two weeks oh, no. of our relationship. No, is it true? It wasn't uh, in the first two weeks. It was after four months. <laughs> Did you lock her? Is it true? No. We, had, we just had a talk and... Uh, I don't want to give the details, no. Uh, did you cheat it on her? No, no, no. <coughs> so, just to clarify the gravity of this situation, like, what did, you, did she do something or why did you look yes, up? Yes, yes, I mean, she was... Lies, the, he's lying she again. Was, she was cheating on me, and definitely cheating on me, <laughs> because I'm, I'm quoting on her. She said, I only live with you, but I found pleasure in other things. I mean, <laughs> this is <Right>. definitely cheating. <laughs> How did the jealousy manifest? Well, I was taught to look down when walking down the street. I was not allowed to talk to anybody, men, women. I didn't even have credit on my phone to call someone. I was under his... But uh, he was bringing the money in the house, right? Yeah, but I also, I used to have a job, but with him being so jealous, you know. Okay, I think we can go a little bit deeper than that. Radia, right, yeah. what do you mean by finding pleasure in other things? I just wanted to be able to leave the house, to go for a walk, for a cup of coffee, to even have a conversation with somebody who didn't think like shit. <laughs> So we saw the women's side of the story, but let's find out if Irina really loves Ramona. Irina, tell me, do you really love Ramona? I really love her. I think we are meant to be together. It's like destiny and I really feel she's mine and whatever I'm doing, I'm doing for the sake of our love. Thank you very much. Respect the man. This is fundamental. Yeah. Of course, of course. Is it, is it true that you left him? Why did you come back? I left because of fear. But I came back and I forgive him by force. He told me if you don't come back, I will put you in the ground. He broke my skull. And uh, I went to the hospital. And after that, I went to live with my parents. He came there and he said, if you don't come back, I'm willing to go to prison, but I will put you in the grave. But you still love each other. I mean, you came here together. That's what is important, yes. right? <laughs> I think uh, if, uh, if you don't give up, you will make it work. I bet. Doamnelor și domnilor, aceasta a fost emisiunea din seara aceasta. Vă așteptăm și mâine la ora 17. Gata dumneavoastră, mire la Baida, toate cele bune. Mă bucur foarte mult că v-am cunoscut. Sunteți incredibili, efectiv. Ați venit să aveți o copii. Cred că vă bucur dacă îl faceți. Sunteți foarte bine. Pentru că vă ia din responsabilități. Muchas gracias para esta noche. Uh, vamos a ver mañana a la misma hora. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Eh, uh, para siempre, tu sí, sí. amor será, uh, será por siempre. Besitos. Love again. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Um, what do you think happens with the couple after the show? I can't imagine how I can't imagine how they came together after all the stories. They they were so surely there should be some fight, some tension, maybe violence. I don't know. Hopefully the woman left. <laughs> But right here, I mean, what do you think happened with the with the couple after the show? Maybe they break break up. Okay. And I know it is not for us that the things they said and that mm -hmm. said no, no, okay. let's break up. Okay. Uh, what do you think happened with the couple after? The show? Nothing. The same story. The same story is repeated. <laughs> Ramona was killed by her husband. She was stabbed multiple times in front of the church. Um, 13 days after the interview, Maria was tied up to a chair by Jose and then set on fire. about how are you feeling after you saw this talk show and what exactly makes you feel like that? Uh, I don't know, are these stories real? Yes, everything was real that we show you here, even the sex was inspired from the TV show. Even the killing Everything. So can you see her to your father, who is neighbor to you, and just share how I feel and what makes you feel like but I'm not a big uh, reality TV show or talk show or whatever. But I, I, uh, I'm, I, the fact that this is a real story even bothers me more. Also because normally people in these situations, they expose their relation and this is like a cry for help. Because they have no other way of getting visibility to their problem. And maybe this is the way they find like, maybe someone will look at this and think this is not right and they will try to help me. And I know this is also a play, but the role of the talk ho the hosts of the show also bothers me even more with her saying, oh, don't worry, you will find true love, you'll sort things out. It's just, I don't know, I am very bothered by the whole situation. And then knowing the unfortunate end that both women had, and maybe also because I'm a woman, and I don't know, it's just like very overwhelming. And that's okay. Um, so I felt really emotional. Actually, I wanted to cry. It was really um, intense, guys. We've well done um, because um, it, it's so unfair that women are scared and they go through these experiences in their own houses. 
And as I said to Dorina, uh, in Greece the past couple of months or like weeks, we had so many, like at least five women that got killed by their boyfriend or their husband. They were on holidays, they got beaten up, like, like horrible things. Um, and it, it is a reality. Uh, it is like a very high percentage of women that get killed by their husband. Or husband. Thank you. Um, well, we were talking about this. Yeah. A little bit louder, so I guess. Yes, yes, sure. Uh, well, um, what comes to my feeling of that, as I was telling to Liliana, was I feel uneasy seeing that. Uh, non comfortable, whatever that means, it can be a, a range of things. Uh, what makes me more uncomfortable is that this thing, as you very successfully present, can happen anywhere. With the same staging, changing the nationality, changing the place, it can be universal. So it's a universal problem, which to my eyes it's clear, it's patriarchy. Uh, and patriarchy does not mean, just mean that the men are the problem, it's the society around women that have a problem, meaning that even women can be the problem for women, because we have to uh, separate the phenomenon of violence in general from violence against women in specific. That's different. Violence is bad, of course, everyone knows that violence is bad, but violence against women by, uh, in terms of how they are raised and in terms of how they are treated by their partners or how they a race to think they should be. This is patriarchy. And as uh, Eleni was saying, um, we have really fresh memories of the news in Greece these days. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know, I, I have been lucky to not have experienced this in my relationships, but still, as a woman, it makes me feel in pain. And the, I don't know, probably I'm, I'm more angered uh, by the, 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 the position of the hosts. Because, okay, you, you can, let's say, I, I, don't work, I don't like this word, but the husband is the obvious villain. But the host is not the obvious villain, but it's, it's a strongest villain because it's uh, the society saying that, okay, there's, no, there's nothing you can do, you're a woman, this is your position. You chose this man, and this is your fate. Embrace it and die. But, yeah. And I felt very connected to the play because of what is happening in Greece the last two months, which is extreme. And it's getting visibility, because of course these things were happening before, but now it's getting more visibility. And it's also very similar what was happening in the news with the stories because um, for example there was a, a, a very aggressive story uh, two months ago in Athens uh, where for one month the news were playing because the husband didn't admit it was him and he made the whole story that it was some foreign uh, thieves that came inside and they stabbed the woman and the ba newborn baby was on the top of her dead body and he was uh, in ropes and uh, and he and he said he made a whole story that uh, some foreigners came and the news were all talking about these foreigners and they took they even took a I don't know a Tunisian I don't know a guy uh, with a migration background and they beat him up so that he can admit that it was him and one month after. Uh, of course, uh, the, the husband was under pressure because the police didn't find any facts of uh, foreigners or thieves and he had to admit it was him and the other guy was b beaten up like in the police station so that he had, I mean, all the news, what was representing, with no reason, I mean, it was not the police investigation and after that, that the news just said, if they were representing all the stereotypes, all the racism, everything, uh, and imagine this baby in with his ha with his father the whole time where the, his father did all this thing. I mean, it was really shocking. And I I don't know the the role of the news uh, is very very similar and even much worse than what you actually showed. I will come back to you, but you want to put the uh, so, 
I, li I like the show because it shows a lot of things, not just one problem about relationships or uh, about the family or women rights or the, even the shows and media. But let's talk about a uh, point. Let's not act like we, all of us we are perfect because violence is an instinct. All of us we have violence inside us, but it depends how we are showing it. And in every relationship, even uh, psychology proves this. Both of us we want to be the dominant, but it's there is a difference because men they are using physical power, men, the women they are using mental power. This is the difference. So if we, uh, we will talk about the extremity of women, oh, well, we don't have this, we don't have this. Uh, let's talk about mentality first. Why if uh, a guy he will catch his wife cheating on him, he will slap her. Oh, how dare a man slaps his wife? But if it will happen, the inverse, oh, she's really brave, he really deserves it. When we change something like this, maybe we can talk about the show, maybe we can fix something else, and maybe we can talk about the rights more about women and men. But if it's like that, it will not work. That is contrary, Kitu. He saying some that uh, strong, interesting aspects. Do you want to comment on what he said? Yes, because that's, that's exactly the problem. It's just that men are less affected not that they are not affected, they are less affected because they have more power in the society. So maybe the man can be uh, abused too, of course, we can, uh, I don't know if anybody knows the whole story with Johnny Depp, the, the, the actor, yeah, and yeah, the yeah. Woman. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. it's still debatable and it's still everything, but he got abused too, and he was fired from his job, job. and yeah, the woman job. that abused him was not. Okay, because nobody believed the problem as much as it is. It's still a problem, yes, but that's patriarchy because you are supposed to be strong and always on point and you should not suffer, but in the same time, while men are mm, oppressed and uh, uh, not able to express their feeling, the women are killed and silenced. So it's still a problem, but you're not paying with your life for it. Okay, yeah. Matilde, so they have uh, yes, they are. I think, exactly. I think it's important. Yes, it occurs both ways. There are women who are yes. victims, and there are also men who are victims. And I think it's important to talk of both sides. But also, numbers don't lie. And there are many yes. and many more women being killed and being abused than men. Also, we are told, since we're little, and we are taught in school, and we hear stories, even in our history of our own countries, them for the longest of times women have served men and we're here to to, to to please them and whatever so this kind of translates then how we are now and also there's another situation that one doesn't invalidate the other and just because there are also men that are victims doesn't mean that these women are not in the right place to be I don't know well, and also, I'm going to say something else, because this was like two weeks ago, when England lost in the, in the final, we saw so many things about the fact that 38% of uh, like, uh, domestic violence would raise 38% in English households just because England lost the final. This yes. is outrageous. And the fact that we are worried that we're not paying more attention to it and we're not giving it the proper attention and this is the, the perfect example that you have people who watched this and could have simply reported what is happening is like what bothers me the most. Boyka? Um, I strongly disagree with what, um, what's your name? Yes. 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 He's saying because uh, really it's taking the focus and it's distracting from the main uh, point. Because yes, <laughs> mental power, physical power, what does it mean? Uh, of course, women will find some how way to react, but how often have you heard of a husband who has lost his life because of a disagreement in the family? Almost never. And then when uh, we're really living, as you see, the, all the Greek team is very emotional because every now and then uh, a couple is going on holidays and the girl never comes back. So it is really not the same thing. If I tell you something and you feel sad and you go home, and then if you not tell me something, you just take my neck and then it's done. So it's uh, really distracting and uh, we're talking about different things. Yeah.
Jules. I feel that the point is that we are not saying that women are angels in earth and we have no power. I mean, yes, we have no power, but not that we cannot be violent. Is that the problem is that we are killed. So this is the focus. It's not that we are angels, it's not that we are perfect, it's not that we have no uh, no flaws exactly, but it's that, that the problem is that many women are killed. So I think we should not mm, for, uh, mm, uh, we should not uh, forget that this is the point. I mean, of course, also men are killed, and I'm sorry for that. But still, we should keep in mind that this is the moment, the, the main problem. I would like to focus maybe the discussion on what happened in this show. Yes. So, what was the most uh, or the main problematic aspects that you saw in this talk talk show? Some yeah. of you mentioned things, but let's list the most problematic aspects according to you that you noticed in this talk show. So um, one thing that stayed in my head quite like vividly is that um, th that group uh, that the lady tried actually to leave the house, but then the husband threatened that I will kill you if you don't come back. So I I guess that there is not like a supporting group there, or I mean family support, or even she found them. Uh, guts <laughs> to like leave the house, but then she had to come back. She was forced to come back. Yeah. What's your name? Uh, Natalia. Natalia. Okay. Uh, for me, shocking is that what media made with our brains, because uh, I was wondering what kind of TV show it was, because uh, in Poland we have a lot of uh, TV talk shows where there are actors and all the stories are made up. And if you have these kind of progr programs and uh, the, the other programs, like normal people brain usually can't uh, know which one, which story is true and which is false. And uh, it makes me really worried about uh, our way of thinking because the level of violence in TV and in media is really high and it makes us less um, sensitive for that and that nobody reacted on this th seeing this in tv show what does it mean for us like what should we do yeah what's your name uh, Maria. Yeah, maria 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 okay so uh what catch me in this book in the romanian one is the when the viewer said to the to the couple oh but uh, you love each other right so everything would be fine so Somehow she was justifying the acts of the, the husband and it's okay to happen this way as long as you love each other you're gonna go back home and you're gonna solve it. She didn't like, she, she took a position with him. She didn't defend the woman in that position. Aneta? Uh, but also, also, low, because they're also, low, so they okay. also what I saw here, uh, probably, like from this what I saw, uh, it was probably the only possibility for the women to give the voice, to ask for the help, to scream for the help somehow. So they were trying, but then, yeah, the journalist just said, okay, okay, but you love each other and so on. But after that, nobody checked uh, how was it later. Like, nobody asked actually do you need the help of psychologists do you need the help of uh, anybody else the, the police institution so this thing what's your name hola hola okay so i saw there like three uh ways three stages on uh, stages personalities like the woman was stopped by the man but she was full of angry and trying to express herself in this uh, like somebody said to uh, wanting for help, crying for help. But she was stopped by the man uh, and she couldn't um, fulfill that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that aim. And the man was kind of like trying to uh, cover the situation and trying to, no, that's not like that. And something like covering the, the story and uh, controlling the woman. And the TV presenters were like, um, like um, the TV presenter from Spain said uh, when they ask how you feel about the the pair, that they don't care, they don't care about that. So they were just talking about the problem, 
which is a big problem, but they didn't include themselves in, uh, in the problem. So there was like, kind of, I, I hear you, but this is all for the television. And those was like the three, three personalities of the problem. Um, I was going to say, um, like also when um, the Alex uh, character said she, she just cared about the money, I think that was a big red flag. Also, the man, uh, when the woman was talking in the Spanish TV show, he would hold his hand like, don't talk now, it's like my moment. That was also a big red flag. And also, um, I think it was very interesting, not interesting, but it was mentioned that he even cut her credit of her phone so she couldn't talk to anyone. So the fact that she couldn't even call the police if she needed to. And I think this is very worrying. And also, I think it's um, interesting how the concept of love is often brought up. And I don't think it's love, it's an obsession and it's controlled by fear, which is not right at all. But I think this is also like the show fabricate, fabricate this idea of love and this like goal of this amazing relationship but you love each other but you've known each other since you were kids and you've been oh you've been in a marriage for 17 years but now you're with this man like look what you what you gave up to be with this man and I think this whole like romantic like they romanticize this relationship that it's com obviously wrong and obviously ruled by fear and I think the show has such a responsibility and the, the hosts with it and then they clearly said she's just cared about the money. And I think this also sometimes you have to like look. I'm not saying that it's their fault because the hosts don't have anything to do with the men abusing the woman, but they have a, a, a role and a responsibility when they take these people into their shows to also analyze what's going on. Very interesting story. Many stuff to unpack. I will try to be brief. But we see that this is something happening all over Europe, from Spain until Romania, and every every one of us can see something that they have maybe watched at some point. I find very interesting that uh, this kind of shows, as informal social institutions, they normalize the gender roles of the people being there, and also they normalize the priority of where we focus. We focus on the relationship rather than the gender roles, the people they are follow. Uh, they normalize, but it's there, it's a matter of their own, it's not a social matter. So if there's love, something will go well all of a sudden. Um, something else you want to say? I, I lost my train of thought, so... <laughs> <laughs> there's a phrase stuck in my head that says, uh, uh, I beat you for a reason. This is, for me, it's very important because this is uh, how men, not globally, but in Greece, for sure, grows up. There's a pattern. I beat you for a reason. I'm not blamed. This is life. You do something bad and I beat you. We hear this thing from two years old, from six months, with, I don't know, it's, for me, this phrase is stuck. Um, the aim of this show, the TV show, a bit longer, even I don't hear uh, the aim of this uh, TV show was uh, more like gossiping and uh, showing something, making fun of, uh, and all this stuff, because if you really want to raise visibility of a situation, first of all, you don't invite the pair, you invite the woman or the man alone. You don't do this. This is violent to have a, a couple on stage who have uh, experienced this thing. I mean, the, the, I think the aim of the... Okay, it's clear, the aim of the show is uh, number TV... Watcher. TV watchers and stuff, and... Uh, you don't do. If you want to raise visibility, you uh, give the time to the victim to talk and uh, have a safe space. Aneta? Yeah, I would like to uh, tackle the um, Anna Maria and uh, Alex uh, characters. The host. Uh, yes, but not as journalists, but as women. I don't know if you had the intention to put the women on. They were women in the real life. 
Okay, so that's what I want to point out that when uh, uh, Jose was uh, talking about, okay, uh, this is uh, this is how it is. The tradition is that woman has to respect the man, and no matter what. Uh, and then I let, uh, I mean, the, the one of the journalists was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it shows uh, the, her reaction and her uh, comments that uh, okay, there is a situation of this patriarchy and the violence against the woman, but also the woman is somehow involved in this patriarchy system, so it's natural for her uh, to, to see the world like this. So this is also... What's your name? Uh, Lele. Lele, okay. Uh, I don't watch TV shows, so I, don't, I never witness something exactly like this, but I watch news and in this case, the two posts can be replaced from the title that you can read on the newspapers or on the internet. They can you, you can hear from the news where this type of crimes are called love crimes. Or when they are, the men are beating the woman because they thought she cheated and they are jealous. This is also excusing the even if it's uh, denouncing it because you are exposing it to everyone, it's still putting you in a mindset that this is okay or it's an excuse because it was for a purpose. They had the reason to do it, but even if it's not a reason, if it's not, uh, I, how do you say, self-defense, uh, it's not excusable. I mean, you're not defending yourself, then you're hitting someone and you have no reason to do it. It's not a lot of crime, it's a crime point. Um, I heard many of my own thoughts being elaborated before by, uh, by persons here, but I'm glad that we can all share my thoughts. Um, I would like to elaborate a bit more myself on um, how it was acted, because I heard before that they don't let the hosts or the show does not let the women um, protest. I felt by the way it was acted, and thank you for your acting, guys. Uh, this, these are not two women that they came to protest. They came just as a couple, not realizing in what um, tragic situation they are in, and their fate that is coming. And actually, to me, this is the most frequent scenario. Uh, women that receive violence are not women that have realized what's happened to them. And actually, the women are even blamed for that. Like we hear society say, okay, you're beaten up, you receive violence, why don't you leave? They, the outsiders think that this is obvious. And probably after those crimes, people would, 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 would have said, okay, he's a bad person, he beat her up, he killed her, but why didn't she left? So the, the finger is pointed back to her. So um, this is not to be, these are two women in defense that don't exactly know what's happening to them. They might know that something is wrong, but they probably should not realize that, and they're not, uh, they're not given the space, probably, to realize that. And apart from that, I, I heard Alexandros, I heard you, I did catch your name, sorry. Uh, I would like to hear more of the guys here, there are men here, I would like to hear your opinions too. <laughs> I think the main problem is the society. We have an expression in, Portu in Portugal that is between wife and man. You don't put the spoon. It's like between. You don't, you don't get in the middle of it. It's not your problem. We don't don't talk about it. And since we were young, we we heard that like between man and wife, you don't put the spoon. Come on, like we we, we have to put the spoon. We can like let let. Uh, for me, it's like a couple and. They have neighbors and they, they listen every day. They arguing and like beating and crying, and they don't call the police. Like they, I think the neighbors should also be like fined and be in prison and something like that because they know and they don't say anything. It's also their their fault. Uh, linked to that, sometimes, uh, especially for example in Italy, uh, the law is telling you that you cannot do anything if you hear someone beating his wife. Uh, I, I get myself informed for that because I saw like this situation. You cannot call the police and denounce the thing if the wife or who is beaten is not with you. So you have to talk with the wife in this case and convince her to go to the police because you cannot do anything. 
And I, I heard uh, this woman screaming, it was my neighbor. I wanted to do something, but I couldn't, because it, it, I didn't know her, I could, could not speak to her, and in any way, I could not uh, call the police. So this is, for me, uh, I want to ask you what similarities you see in the way uh, the violence against women was portrayed in this talk show with how this kind of violence is portrayed in media in your countries. Like any type of media uh, channel, yeah? If, uh, how, what similarities you see? You said the same? I will say two quick things. One is, in Portugal there are a lot of cases of domestic violence and there are unfortunately many that end up in that. And, one, and there's also many of women who report the situation but because there's so, many there's so much bureaucracy and so much things to take care of that in the process, uh, which is months, sometimes years, the woman ends up getting, getting killed, which is just stupid. And also, the other thing I was going to say, there's also this thing of, and this is, I don't want to generalize because I don't know how it is, but sometimes when you go to a figure of authority as a woman and you want to complain about something, you normally don't get, okay, let me write that. It's like, oh, but are you sure? Oh, weren't you being emotional? Oh, are you sure? What did you do? And I think this is, I think we always need, I don't, we always need to believe the victim. And then when the victim tells they're being abused, you need to look into that and then you'll find out if it's true or not. You cannot believe that the victim is not being a victim because that can end up in something more serious. If you always believe the victim, and it's a, it, if she ends up being a victim, okay, perfect, you kind of realize, you avoided a situation that could have gone worse. But if she was actually not a victim, it's okay. At least you're sure that she's not going to get worse or getting killed or whatever. So I think so you are the mentality out, uh, Another example of things that should change, I don't know, in the legislation or at the institution level and so on. But I'm coming back to my question regarding how media is covering and portraying domestic violence or violence against women and what similarities you see from all the things you mentioned that you noticed in this, in how it happens in your own countries and how media is covering these topics. Eleni? I think if you let also mention something earlier. Um, I, one of the examples that happened, uh, media was writing that Oh, um, that lady asked him to break up with him. This is why this happened. So they're trying to actually somehow justify the violence to, to find the reason. Or like it was a bad timing. They had a fight and then he uh, beat her up. So in like really um, mildly, as if it's not something important. Somebody else do? Yes, the way in Italy this is portrayed is the same, and I wanted to link to what Lele said before, that usually they use the words like love or jealousy that for us, for everybody, are not so negative. I mean, love is not a negative thing. So I think that using this word in social media to describe this situation, you are lowering down the gravity of the crime, because they're saying, oh, it's love. So everybody, it's not that peace, because, I mean, it's love. Well, I think we are all aware that the media doesn't care about the victim or what happened or who is in pain, how this can be improved, but just to sell more newspapers, more uh, people to watch the show and so on. So it is a really a circle that never ends because, uh, yeah, the different <laughs> examples of uh, Greece are re really, really extreme. Like, I don't know how we were out of this in the past because nobody was talking about it, but right now, the, the victim blaming is so, so, so strong that even um, renowned female social personalities, how to say, uh, come out and say, oh, okay, I have also received some uh, slaps, but I have also given back. It's like a, a complete justification and it is reproduced again and again, so... Uh, I'm speechless. Uh, it's some, in Portugal we see a lot in media, like in newspapers, they try to justify the violence or like the killing. Instead of saying like, a man killed this, wo uh, wo this woman because it was a piece of shit. They said like, he killed this woman because supposedly she, 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 she yeah, cheated. So there's a justification. Or like, yeah. instead of like saying like, no, he, he's a piece of shit. A man killed a killed, woman. No, it's there's like, no explanation. He killed a man there's because probably she cheated or probably she was on a coffee. Like, 
media, that's wrong. Media, I was saying that it's the same. They, the media is always justifying things like you are saying. And we also had, this was very huge in Portugal, a judge that he, uh, he forgave. It just it was okay for the man. They went to court, but the man didn't suffer any consequences because he said he beaten on her very badly because she cheated on him. So it was okay. It was okay. And he quoted the Bible. Yeah, he oh, quoted yes. the Bible. <laughs> so this you don't quote the Bible. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, and my group just correct me if I'm wrong. But I feel like in Poland there's not such a level of this situation. Like the media, um, they are feeding. If if something like this is happening, they are just like uh, the wolves, and they want to spread it. Like how bad it was it. Like they're not um, justifying, but they are just feeding on uh, on this bad situation. Like. As if it was, I would like to add to what Natalia said because uh, I would add that we have two narrations actually. One, uh, the national media, which are promoting the perfect shape of the family, these patriarchal values and values and so on. Uh, so they totally hide uh, these kind of situations, like the violence and so on. Okay, when something is very extreme, maybe they will see something, but generally there is no violence in the family because all the family, which is like in the name of God, is perfect and so on. But from the other side, we have these more free media, the free big ones, who are trying to show that this is not like this, and then they are uh, showing the, the situation and that this model is not that, that perfect. So and there is violence. But yes, they there is violence. <coughs> uh, they are mostly exaggerate. I mean, not mostly, but they have this tendency to exaggerate it. Uh, but at least there is a voice like they are pointing it that uh, it is visible. Okay, so, so for us, uh, like I mean, for me, it's uh, better that it is like discussion about that because it's better than it, it was hidden uh, by media totally. Uh, since we got in the media presentation, uh, I, I can get the fact that I personally was assuming that in every country uh, those low crimes are um, received and presented in the same way. Uh, but um, probably I would like to point something uh, else. Um, I have seen uh, media uh, presenting distinctions in such situations being in the center of phenomenon of violence against women, because to me this is the topic. Um, and distinctions and differenti differentiations um, resulting from the social backgrounds, or the class backgrounds of the involved people. Uh, for example, it is, e it is easier probably from, uh, for media to, to blame uh, a man if he is poor, immigrant, not educated, uh, a drunk, probably if he has such characteristics, but if he is good background, well educated, rich man, white man, um, so socially uh, accepted type of man, the then it's man. really difficult. It's really difficult. <laughs> difficult. And all the cases that uh, Lenin yeah. talked about in Greece before, there are cases of clean cut. Uh, thirty something uh, guys with good jobs, with money, what we say is a good guy to get married to. That type of guy. Uh, it's the marrying type. Yeah, the marrying type. Yeah, yeah, like the good guy that the mother said the girls, you should marry that one. If he hits you, yeah, you can marry that guy. He provides you. So I, I guess I see the media, uh, I see distinction there. Between different types of people that are class, in class. class. Yes. But such way of portrayal, why is the media showing you like that? What is the reason? Why is the media actually puts the light on the domestic violence or violence against mm -hmm. women in such a way? Yeah, yeah. For money, but why is this kind of a portrayal selling? Because it's dramatic. Because it's dramatic. Because it's dramatic. Like yeah. Se sex and violence and blood is, is bringing more people to watch it. But you can so talk about people. violence without mentioning the things you have said, right? Justification, complaining and all things. So, yeah. so um, this kind of aspect. People sit here in front of the TV. Uh, Natalia was said also, many times in Hungary, it's also believed that this is not real. These are just actors. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people watch these shows because of fun. 
Ah, that, and they even play it if they go fighting on stage it's and popular. these things. And a lot of people replay it, so yes, but it's I, going viral. My question is also in general about other types of media production that are having similar way of uh, portraying and putting the blame or the justification or minimizing or glorifying love and all these things. Alexandros, so you wanted to say? Yeah, well, these kind of stories appeal to, to, to the viewers because it's the story of others and the story of someone that is beneath you. So the, the approach of the media is to show something that makes people feel good somewhere inside, appear to the industry and say, oh, look at these low lives, how they're, they're living their lives, and we are uh, in a very nice place here. So the story ends and we are in a better place and they are at their own place. Esther? Maybe they would like to show a positive example. A uh, so maybe they would like to show a positive example that okay they had problems but now it's okay and they love each other and the man will not uh, kill the woman and you should do this too if you had problems like this. Uh, uh, the fact is that uh, media is also made by people and people are part of the same society that is permitting all of this so they are still while writing a story, uh, they are still influenced by what's always have been. I mean, things are always have been like this. Back in the days, your grandma was beating by your grandfather. So, so you're saying it's perpetuating it's the mentality that it's of the still the mentality, yes. And it's, and it's very difficult to make the step in the other direction because everything is going that way. So it's also selling less because it's more debatable if the victim is not blamed. I mean, that's what, what, it's also how you grow up. I mean, you are used to use these words and you have to stop and think about it and, and find out that this use of words, love and love crime is wrong by itself because you're so used to it that for you it's just the definition and you uh, struggle by yourself to find out that the, the definition itself is a problem. Andrea? I was just thinking when do these news come out and I think these news are coming out when they're, they want to operate with the fear like oh yeah he was killing her these type of things uh, I think most of the times these things are not reported and how Mirto said they are reported by the media only in those cases when it's a minority or a vulnerable group or somebody coming uh, from a less uh, status. And I think it's also for the creating fear and creating sometimes tension between people. This is how it is pictured. So it's not always uh, domestic violence, but the fear and operating with the fear we are protecting you. But it's only then when, when I see these type of stories. Most of the times they remain not covered. Um, first of all, they reproduce what uh, the stereotypes in society are, so the mainstream uh, way of thinking. So it's more, uh, it has more viewers because it reproduces this. But the, the second reason, uh, in Greece, for example, the, the, the government and the state wants conservatism, want, uh, wants that we go back to family values, to I don't know. I don't know why, but I don't know why. Because it's easier to manipulate. It's society. easier to manipulate to be in your house, yeah. to to have your security in your family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mirka, um, actually, it's it's really good because it was, uh, my my thought is exactly in the line of your letter, and I don't know. I can't. Let me know. Yeah, you. Uh, media is a part of the system. Uh, is is a is a. Um, a direct line from society. It's not something outside observing, it's a part of society. Um, so if uh, it, and it echoes the values of the society, so in the art of society, that the dominant media attitude would be as expected from the art um, And as Violetta said, the institutions are a big part of the situation. Um, and I, I probably personally have an answer to what Violetta wondered about. Um, I think that it's a time of crisis today. Uh, ten years now we're in an economic crisis university, and we, we also have uh, COVID right now. So big crisis, big identity crisis. No one knows who, who, who he 
he or she is. Um, and collectively, we don't know who we are. And uh, as history has shown in times of crisis, people tend to go back to the norms, to the traditional norms, to uh, what we feel safer into in society in its own role. Uh, in the Greek society, probably in many more societies, this is family. This is something uh, like this. Something that what is considered the, what was considered the, a good, the norm, uh, and popular <laughs> institutions. Sorry. Uh, yeah, just like very briefly to say that um, I think it's like really a matter of publicity. So media will provide what um, gains more attraction, and I think um, it can happen the opposite way. So like. Um, when some like women could not find the space to talk about violence but then uh, in Greece it happened like a campaign and then this became more popular and we can see like more and more women coming up in the media actually and um, have, have like sharing their stories. I have a last question for you because you mentioned a lot of things that this is also you know, a bigger problem in the societies that has different things uh, manifesting, problematic and so on. So we are all parts of our societies in different ways. We are also media consumers in different ways. So my question for you is, what can we do, if there's anything we can do, to change uh, how we are talking about violence against women? How it's being talked in media, how it's being talked in the society, what is the perspective on Violence against women. What can we do? Uh, social media is a way that we can raise awareness about how to talk about these things, raise awar awareness about what is happening. Uh, in Greece, it's happening a lot in the social media with the Me Too movement, story sharing. Okay, it's also problematic because there are discussions which reproduce the problems that in mainstream media, but I think social media is one way. The tool that can be used yes. to raise this issue. Yes. Uh, well, I think the more obvious uh, response to this is that naturally comes to speak out. Uh, but uh, for me, there is one step behind, and it is to provide the, the space and the support for everybody who feels strong enough to speak out because we are not there yet. So if we consider ourselves aware, it's just uh, the building of this um, understanding and um, space for the victims to know that they are not alone, that they can talk to somebody, and then comes the step where somebody, some, uh, yeah, someone might find the strength to speak out. Mm -hmm. um, for me personally, I don't really like to watch these kind of shows in my country because they are trying to make it like like a series or like a drama or a movie or something and people would be watching it and it would become a normal thing for them. So I am really against this type of shows because it makes like, like a society... Like boycotting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, boycotting. Because you know, like people would be like talking, oh, yesterday, you, you see what happened? Like he beat her and it's a normal thing. It's not like, oh, he beat her and we should act on it. No, they are talking about it like it's a movie and that's it, you know? So boycotting and changing the type of the show. Not to make it look like a drama, but to make it look like a serious social problem. I think we should also develop our empathy and be more ready to understand and listen to the victims and not blame their, them. And question, always question ourselves if we reach something, it's not bad that our first reaction is like, oh, maybe this is made up. But we should always stop and reflect and be like, okay, it's really made up, maybe it's not. And before blaming the victim for everything, we should really develop our empathy and try to understand what is going on. Uh, connecting, boycotting, and social media, like pointing out, because we cannot change the system uh, like personally as individuals of the TV shows and so on, but we can point out that if something like this is happening, just uh, share, I don't know, Insta stories and so on, uh, what happened, and just share, 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 so maybe it will be louder and then something will, when the trend will change. Okay, we can take two more comments. Lele? Mine is a very small thing, but I think it makes a big difference. Like, how can how we talk about this and choose correctly our words? When we are talking about something or some issue with a friend, with, your, with our mom, with our dad, uh, not use the wrong words like 
I love crime and stuff like that, but uh, putting ourselves in a position in which you are talking about the crime for what it is. So when people will talk with someone else, probably, or in some time, they will use the same word that you are using. So it would be the slow, but still a change. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Sorry, I was forgetting, but maybe I think that this is little too, but makes a huge difference. Be aware of what we are choose to follow in social media. We should follow just pages of people that are talking about this theme in a way that is correct, so not blaming the victims, because if we always share and follow that people instead of the others that are spreading patriarchy and wrong way to see the things, then we, we give visibility to the right person and people and pages and whatever. So we should be aware of what we are following, because a follow or a like it can be harmful for us, but it really makes a difference. But also a comment in which you are, like, if you, if you are commenting on an uh, article with the wrong title or that's using the wrong word or is victim blaming, even if you are commenting something against it, you are still putting him on top of the... Yes. Uh, so you call it? Or no. Yes. Your board. As exactly as much as as you are against it, you should report and do nothing else. Because if you are commenting, even if to say, but this is so wrong, your comment is a comment, and you are helping it reach They're more people. Because yes. your friends on Facebook, your followers on Instagram will see that you commented that, so they are the possibility to read it, open it and giving it more and more and more visibility. Thank you. Thank you very much. We Performing newspaper theater. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bringing these issues to, to more people, yeah. So we hope you can yeah, uh, apply many of these things and not only yeah, within Aspire space to, to do more. We thank you very much for participating in our discussion.